holds a great joy, a great honor, a great privilege for me to be able to introduce my good friend, Sister Ruth Heflin. Hallelujah, it's the new wine. Oh, hallelujah. Let me just say it's on the table. Just have a drink. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. You can sit with it all around you. Amen. On the table, in the glass, already poured out, but you've got a drink. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes people say, how is it that the denominational people never came into the baptism of the Holy Ghost when it's right there in the Scripture. They never drank. Amen. <laughs> he just says, If any man is thirsty, let him come unto me and drink, and out of his belly. <laughs> out of his belly shall flow rivers 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 you mean you can drink and have all of that happen oh yes <laughs> oh we just drink a little bit but we get a river back hallelujah that drinking of a little bit releases the river of god flowing out of us and when you want the rivers to keep on flowing you keep on drinking amen hallelujah just taking in taking in taking in we have had an uh, an emphasis in the word movement so much on the word and i'm i'm not uh, in any way negating that but not enough on the spirit amen hallelujah but there is a balance of the word and the spirit hallelujah for the spirit uh, causes that which the word has says to be fulfilled amen brings forth that fulfillment amen and as the uh, the word says the letter kills <laughs> but the spirit Make it alive. Oh, hallelujah. We're coming into new life. Amen. Hallelujah. For those that are interested in coming to Bible school, there's going to be a special emphasis on the Word and the Spirit. Amen. The Spirit, so that you can move into it more quickly. Would you, brothers, just move this platform or pulpit over just a speck? Hallelujah. I like to be right on that. Uh, We'll get a little bit of that center. Praise the Lord. And that's right, just a little bit. We'll move it over. Hallelujah. When you're preaching and you're off center, you feel it. Yeah, just a little. Hallelujah. That's right. They're going to pull it back to where it was supposed to be. I know he did it. Maybe, maybe we're a little... Well, we'll get it adjusted exactly like it's supposed to be. It may be a little bit too far this way, but we'll get it. We'll get it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, that's what happens with revival. You know, you pull it this way a little a little extra, and, uh, and then it goes, you pull it back that way to get it adjusted, and then finally we get it right where God wants it, <laughs> in the center of what he's doing by his spirit hallelujah hallelujah how many are willing for what god has for this year amen, amen. and if you're not willing some of them uh, i noticed some of you sort of cautiously did this <laughs> hallelujah but uh, it, it, we can say lord i'm willing to be made willing but do it in your anointing <laughs> Don't do it in any, you know, don't let that uh, being made willing happen in any, any other way except in the church. Lord, I want it in the church. I want it in the anointing. I, I want it in the glory. I don't want to be made willing by the circumstances of life, by all of the situations round about me. I don't want to come into the things that you have for me by pressures from without. I want it to be from within. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why I want that wine of the Holy Ghost just to flow. <laughs> oh, 
hallelujah, hallelujah. Some of you are saying, not me. But I tell you, the ones that are saying, not me, the loudest, the most often are going to be the ones that if you progress on, you're going to be leading the strange things that God's doing in this day and hour. Oh, yes. Have you ever considered how new everything was from the book of Acts on? You know, we... We see it in retrospect, and it's all very normal to us. But remember, every one of those disciples were preaching a revolutionary message. The Apostle Paul was preaching a revolutionary message. Every one of them. I mean, even I love the story of Peter going down to the house in Caesarea because it shows he was a little nervous about it all. He, it was so brand new, he didn't quite know how to handle it. Uh, amen. But he, uh, he, when he went back to Jerusalem, he had to say this. Well, it happened while I was preaching. <laughs> I, I think a lot of things are going to have to happen while we're preaching. Amen. Or else we're not going to be able to handle the newness of it all. Why is why are so many preachers getting up in the pulpit and God sort of uh, working them over in the pulpit in front of all the congregation? Because uh, if it were in the prayer room, they might not be able to handle it. And some of the things God wants to do in the congregation, we might not be able to handle. Uh, hallelujah. But we see God doing it while we're preaching. Uh, Hallelujah. I, I believe that. I believe we're going to see while we're preaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. While I was preaching, Peter said, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. And what could I do but go along with the Holy Ghost? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when the people aren't there to witness it, you have to sometimes explain about this because sometimes we don't expect God to use this person or that person <laughs> or the other person. But I, I, I feel that that whole story of Peter uh, with the vision on the rooftop in Joppa is going to be more and more the focal story for this revival. I believe that. In which that, that sheet was let down and the Lord said, Kill and eat, Peter. Not me, Lord. <laughs> Not me, Lord. I've never eaten anything common or unclean. <laughs> Hallelujah. Kill and eat, Peter. Not me, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. And then suddenly the word, there are men waiting for you at the gate. Go with them, doubting nothing. Why don't we just turn to that this morning? Hallelujah. Go with them, doubting nothing. We're going to see God revolutionizing our lives in such a way Hallelujah. Thank God for the vision of the Lord that uh, helps us to be willing to move into the new and teaches us in such a way that we can handle it. Now remember, uh, I'm, I'm going to start, I'm going to, uh, the first part of the chapter speaks about how God dealt with Cornelius. Remember this, Cornelius was not yet saved, but he, the Scripture calls him a devout man, one that feared God, verse 2, with all of his house. Acts chapter 10 and verse 2, <coughs> speaking of Cornelius, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people. And prayed to God always. He saw a vision. Remember, he, he was devout. He feared God. He gave alms to the people and he always prayed. We know he wasn't saved because Acts chapter 11 says it. He saw a vision. Does God give visions to unsaved people? He does. Amen. <clears throat> I have heard people say... <clears throat> 
uh, when they hear of an unsaved person having a vision, oh, they say, that's of the devil. No, it's not of the devil because God gives these wonderful experiences to lead people into that salvation experience and into that life of being used by God. Praise the Lord. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine arms are come up for memorial before God. And now send, send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Now let me go back to verse 4. There is a scripture that says <clears throat> that God only hears the prayers of, what is that verse that says that of the saved, does it say the saved or righteous or... <clears throat> But God allows us to know here <clears throat> that these prayers and the giving went up as a memorial. They were as a memorial in <clears throat> before God. Even before Cornelius was saved, there was a memorial in heaven. Amen. For Cornelius... Amen. Some people say, well, it doesn't do any good for these people to pray when they really don't know God. Of course it does. Of course it does. How are we going to get to know God unless we are reaching out in prayer? Hallelujah. Does uh, our giving count? Yes, it counts. Uh, hallelujah. I've seen people uh, before they were saved, they had the financial blessing and prosperity that comes from giving even before they knew the Lord because of their giving unto God and giving unto the people. Praise the Lord. I think that so many times we forget that God deals with us in gentleness all of our lives long. From the very before we were even born, He is dealing with us and watching over us and taking care of us and leading us to the time we shall know Him. Now verse 5, And now send some men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside, and he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Sister Hall's getting so excited because she spent a lot of time in Joppa, and she knows the modern-day Jaffa, and she knows that area well. We know exactly where Peter's house was and exactly where Peter was praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He, now, the thing that's so beautiful, and I, I believe this, I believe that in the revival that God's going to cause us to move into areas of words of knowledge just like God gave, gave here to Cornelius. Remember, Cornelius is not yet saved. And yet God tells him exactly where Peter is, <laughs> who he's living with, where the house is. Amen. Can we not reach out and believe God to give us revelation knowledge in this realm? Amen. God is challenging us more and more to move into greater words of knowledge and greater revelation by the Spirit. Now send, verse 5 again, Now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Simon a tanner whose house is by the seaside and he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. 
And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Here he's got two of his, of his household servants and a, dev a devout uh, soldier, and they're on the way to Joppa. It's a, a good ways. I don't know if you're walking or if you're traveling by animal exactly how long it would take you to go, but it's probably uh, a couple of days' journey uh, in order to get there. Oh, but this says on the morrow. Uh, on the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, they must have been riding, they weren't walking, uh, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour, and he became very hungry, and he would have eaten. But while they made ready, and sometimes it's good when the wife is slow, amen, amen, preparing the meal, ha, <laughs> ha, Hallelujah, instead of getting impatient, fall in a trance. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. While he was waiting for them to make ready this wonderful meal, he, while he went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. He became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air and there came a voice to him rise Peter kill and eat Verse 14, this one I want one I want you to remember. Not so, Lord. I mean, can you imagine anybody saying not so to the Lord? Amen. Can you imagine? Amen. Hearing a voice from heaven, having heaven opened, having this come down, and God is speaking, but because it's something contrary to what he had been taught to do immediately his first response is not so lord amen he knew it was god talking it wasn't that he died he questioned anybody else but his immediately response was not so lord for i have never eaten anything that is common or unclean and the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Verse 17, Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision he had seen should mean, Behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house uh, and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were large there. Verse 19, while Peter thought on the vision. <laughs> it's good to meditate on the vision of the Lord. Amen. When God gives you a vision, it's good to meditate. The Spirit said unto him, Behold, Three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down. Go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. Now remember, they hadn't come from downstairs, upstairs, to so let him know they're men. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, oh, hallelujah, the Spirit was the one that let him know. Amen. The Spirit let him know they were there seeking him. And they said, then he begins to speak about Cornelius. I'm not going to read all of that. It's a tremendous portion. But let me just see this. Verse 28. Ye know that it is unlawful. It is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company 
or to come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Oh, oh. I tell you, that's a revelation of the Spirit. Uh, if we can move into this, uh, in this day and hour, God hath showed me not to call any man. Now, he was seeing animals, uh, but the Lord let him know he was not speaking of animals. He was using that uh, to let him know that he would be with many people in the future, that he, his, his education, his religious upbringing, his, uh, his uh, social life, everything concerning him in the past would not have made it even acceptable to do it in the future. But God in that one revelation brought him to the place not to call any man common or unclean. Now, I was very blessed to be a good friend of Brother David Duplessy. How many have read his book, The Spirit Bade Me Go? So a few of the older folks, uh, I mean, folks have been in, in, uh, in, in the realm of the Spirit for years have read it, but it's a wonderful book. Uh, Brother David Duplessy was uh, that whole Duplessy family or a great family from South Africa, even today, one of the duplices is the head of it's the apostolic church there in in uh, South Africa and brother David Duplessy came to America and he was one of the leading people in the assembly of God movement here in our country a great man with great stature but God began to speak to him in fact uh, early in his life uh, brother uh, Smith Wigglesworth had prophesied over him when he was in South Africa that he would be used of God in this revival that would reach out to every denomination. And when that began to happen, and God spoke two things that God spoke to Brother David Duplessy, he spoke to him first to go to the World Council of Churches. And when he went to the World Council of Churches in New York City, I tell you, his denomination was so upset uh, that he would go to the World Council of Churches and pray for some of those men. And I mean, you know, we all knew uh, that they were all liberals and, uh, and in every denomination they were the most liberal people. I mean, this was the thinking in those days. And, uh, you know, no one, we just, the Jews, have no dealing with the Gentiles. It was that uh, uh, type of thinking that everybody had. And uh, in Pentecost, I mean, if God was going to do something, it had to be over at our place. I mean, God's going to do it in our place or it's not going to be done at all. But remember, Peter had to go. <laughs> he had to go up to Caesarea. Amen. It didn't happen in Joppa. It went up there in Caesarea in a place where it had never happened before. And uh, Caesarea in those days was a flourishing Roman city. Amen. And uh, named after Caesar, Caesarea was there. And it was not a, a Jewish town at all. Amen. It was a total heathen society by the thinking of the of the Jews in that day anybody that went up to Caesarea it would be like going and throwing your life away in Hollywood or whatever place that you can think of that would sort of speak of the world and uh, all of those things that are worldly but even in Caesarea <laughs> There were the hungry ones that were reaching out to God. Oh, yes, the hungry ones reaching out to God. Well, Brother David Duplessy began to pray for folks at the World Council of Churches, and they began to be filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. You'd think everybody in the world would have been happy. Oh, no. His denomination was concerned because he was touching the common and the unclean. Amen. He, he was touching in areas that, uh, that uh, people weren't touching in. And then later... When the ecumenical councils took place in Rome, and remember this is Rome in the early 60s with the Catholic Church before many of these great changes had taken place in the, in the structure and the spirit of the church. Brother David Duplessis was invited as the observer to go, and he attended each one of these conferences and the title of his book was the spirit bade me go oh hallelujah there is going to be a bidding of the holy spirit in these days that's going to take us out of the area of our comfort zone amen out of the area of their comfort zone i, I heard something cute on the news today in the area of comfort and I'll just mention it was on meet the press this morning and they were in a, interviewing Buchanan and uh, and you know the Iowa uh, uh, caucus is coming up and uh, and they were <laughs> they were interviewing him and as they were interviewing him they said now Newt Gingrich has said that if any of the other candidates get in He'll be comfortable with Dole. He'd be comfortable with Lamar. He'll be com he went down the list. You know, he'll be comfortable with this one, this one. And, but he said, he'll, he said of you, speaking to Mr. Buchanan, uh, he would be uncomfortable. What do you say about that? And I thought it was cute. He answered, he'll just have to be uncomfortable. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to say this. Uh, if God is dealing with us, to move out of our comfort zones in any way. We're just going to have to be uncomfortable. Hallelujah. Until we can get comfortable with the new. Amen. We're just going to have to be uncomfortable. Amen. In the newness of what God is doing in this day. I don't know of anyone that has been used of God in the 60s and 70s uh, and even into the 80s like brother david duplessis was used uh, he crossed every border and his organization was so upset they put him out uh, he was persona non grata they didn't shake hands with him they didn't invite him to any meetings uh, he suddenly lost his full i mean he was one of these top men in his denomination but that's not the end of the story. But by the time God began to work, <laughs> before some years before he died, they called him up from his uh, organization and said, Come, we want to reinstate you. Uh, we want to reinstate you with full honors. <laughs> Hallelujah. He had walked the road alone for a number of years. But because he was willing to do it, uh, the Presbyterians, I remember when the Presbyterians first put on in their magazine, Get to Know Your Pentecostal Neighbors, all those little, uh, those little movements that God was breaking down, barriers and walls and fences, all of those little areas were taking place in those years. It was tremendous how God began to... We're all familiar with it now. It's a very normal thing. I think we've got some Lutherans here now and we've got some Baptists here now and some Presbyterians and some, some Methodists and some... Yeah, one Methodist there and some Episcopalians and, you know, some uh, uh, Catholics. And we, Well, we've got everybody here now. If we started the denominational thing like we did the nations last night, we'd probably have more more than 15 or 16 represented. But I want you to see this, that as people paid a price to bring it to where it is now, you and I might have to pay a price to take it on to where God wants to take it. Amen? 
Hallelujah. We may have to be misunderstood for a while. We may have to be uh, in a situation that uh, is uncomfortable for us. Sometimes uh, it's not people's rejection of us, but it's our own unwillingness to let God make us comfortable in a new situation. We just close ourselves. Now, I was blessed because this move of the Spirit of God started in the late 50s. It actually, the revival started in 48 when Israel became a nation. But this move of the Spirit, by the time it was in sort of full swing in the f late 50s, early 60s, by the time I got to Hong Kong, I was, uh, I was working with people like Brother David Duplessis and, uh, and uh, Brother Ed Stube, who was one of the top Episcopalians that was filled with the Spirit and working with people like this. Uh, and it was wonderful for me because it gave a broad perspective. Until I went to Hong Kong, I had never been in a church unless it were a funeral or a, a wedding. I had never been to a church that was not Pentecostal. I didn't know one chorus that was not a Pentecostal chorus. But I would say from 58 on, I have spent more time in circles that are non-Pentecostal than I have Pentecostal. In fact, uh, I would say mostly when I've been in Pentecostal circles, it's been when I've come back here to camp meeting and the rest of the time I haven't been. For instance, when we first went to Israel, now I, I, I'm preaching, with, unless you realize that I'm preaching on this. Amen? The year of change. When I first... <laughs> When I first went to Hong Kong, <clears throat> uh, I only, I, all of my frame of reference was totally Pentecostal. And then later, when we first went to Jerusalem, we took from our campground here, this would have been 1972, we took from our campground uh, 24 or 5 young people to live in Israel for six months. And so as God began to enlarge us, folks would come in and they'd say, oh, where are you folks all from? I'd say, oh, well, we're all from Virginia. We're all, and they'd say, well, what denomination? Well, we're all Pentecostal. But gradually and very quickly during those six months, things changed. And, uh, and when we went back to live in Israel permanently, it was changing even more rapidly. And I would, without realizing it, you know how we automatically answer like we've answered for years. We, you know, we have certain pat understandings. And I found myself saying, they'd say, where are you folks from? And I'd say, oh, well, we're all from Virginia, except, oh, yes, he's from Puerto Rico and she's from France and uh, she's from Australia. And by the time I went around the room, I realized we Virginians were in the minority. And that's the way it began to happen as far as the denominations were concerned. They'd say, well, what, you know, what is your, your background uh, uh, and your church? I said, well, we're all Pentecostal except, oh, she's Catholic and he's Episcopalian and she's... And, and then it began to be, until it got to be the place, I was the only Pentecostal. And I was the only Virginian. Everybody else was from all of the different denominations uh, and all of the different uh, uh, states and countries and other places. Do you see what I'm saying? God wants to bring these changes into our lives and he doesn't want us to be uncomfortable in them. God can raise up the greatest door for you, but if, you're, if you refuse to flow into the door, after I, I just spoke with someone a couple of days ago, God had raised a, a, one of the great doors in America. God had opened for this person, and they've been in that, in that situation for a year. But they never adjusted. 
never adjusted. It's one of those opportunities everybody here would give their eye teeth to be in. Never adjusted just to the little adjustments uh, to make it happen. And so they've given in their resignation and they're going to be moving on. Back, they're moving back to familiar territory instead of letting God bring the enlargement. God will keep you. Now, did, did God tell them it was fine to go back? Yes, because God would rather you function in a comfort zone than non-function in a, in a zone of that's uncomfortable for you if you're not willing for him to bring comfort into it. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? What happened with Peter? Peter never was really comfortable, even though it happened to him. When he got back to Jerusalem, he was apologetic for what God was doing. Amen. He was so concerned with what the brethren would think about what happened up in Caesarea. He never was totally comfortable for it. And that's why I believe God raised up Paul to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Amen. Hallelujah. Peter was out of his comfort area. And God raised up Paul to be an apostle to the Gentile nations of the world. Could Peter have had a greater portion? I believe he could have. But he wasn't comfortable with it. He was back in that comfort zone of the Jewish people in the Jewish nation. Now, I don't know what God's calling us all into. I'm just preaching this sermon because this is what's come out of our spirit this morning. Uh, but I do know this, that when we, when we preach along this line, now I'm, I'm moving into some... Uh, zones that I'm not quite as comfortable in myself. Amen? Every new thing that God starts to bring you into, uh, we'd all rather be in the comfort area that we're familiar with uh, than starting in the area we're not as familiar with and be uncomfortable. Amen? And, uh, for instance, just recently we've had these two interviews on television were we totally comfortable? No. You know, we weren't totally comfortable because it's a new area. Even though we've preached before crowds, you know, we don't have any problem getting up and preaching into great crowds. Uh, but uh, God wants you to move out of the comfort area <laughs> and let him make the new area comfortable. Now, the other thing God's doing for my brother and me is that he's opening, you know, last January the 14th, I had the privilege of being the guest chaplain at the House of Representatives at the National Congress. <clears throat> and uh, when I stood in front of the pulpit or the, the podium, I was totally comfortable. But all of the thoughts prior to getting there, I was not totally comfortable. I had to write a prayer I'd never written a prayer in my life amen they said they gave me the amount of uh, you know the amount uh, of words that it could be and uh, that the prayer had to be sent ahead of time I said well how do you write a prayer I mean you know the Episcopalians the the other churches they wouldn't have any problem writing a prayer I wouldn't know how to begin writing a prayer so what did we do we got the tape recorder <laughs> and got in the spirit and prayed for the nation and, uh, you know, and, and got more and more in the spirit. and listen. Then we listened back to some of the things that came out in the realm of the spirit as we were praying, and we jotted those together and, you know, sort of uh, tidied it up a little bit, made sure it wasn't too many words, and went uh, sent it off. Amen, <laughs> to Washington by fax, and it appeared in the congressional record. I mean, this prayer that we had sort of worked over with the Holy Ghost on the tape recorder, was that an area of comfort? No. But in the next couple of months, my brother and I both are being invited to pray two days each at the legislature in Pennsylvania. And uh, that'll be on on uh, cable television from one side of Pennsylvania to the other. 
Now, this time, we're not going to have to write it out. But still, we're moving a little out of comfort zone. Anybody know what I'm saying? Moving out of comfort zone, what we are familiar with. But are we just going to go back into comfort zone? No. Amen. Are, are we going to reach out? Now, I'm only using this for an example, but for everyone here this morning. God has got areas of enlargement that are not going to be comfortable to begin with. But he wants us to, per, to move on. Amen. In whatever area God is enlarging us, he wants us to move on and let it happen. Hallelujah. He wants us to hey, go with them doubting nothing, amen, don't be wavering, am I doing the right thing, have I missed God, am I in the wrong thing, no, do go out of the comfort area and let God do it in your life, amen, hallelujah, whatever God's saying, I remember one time, you know, now I think that probably, you know, I've always considered that I was, uh, probably one of the most free people as far as denominations were concerned of most anybody I knew. But I went back to Israel and Sister Susan had become good friends with some people of a particular denomination. And we had known them for years, but it's one thing, you know, for them to drop by two or three times a year and you say hello and you get, serve them a cup of tea and in becoming good friends. And I noticed it bothered me. And I suddenly realized that the only reason it bothered me was the name of their denomination. It was their denomination. It had nothing to do with the people. They were very fine people, but I had sort of gone through every other denomination, but I hadn't gone through this one yet. And I made up my mind it wasn't going to bother me. Amen. I made up my mind I was not going to let the enemy put uh, even a little bit of, you know, if he can put a little nail there, he can hang any old dirty dog on that nail he wants to. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yes, he can. And he can put that, if you leave a little nail, there's nothing there but a little nail, but if you leave that little nail, he can, he can expand on that uh, and just bring, uh, cause, cause that which God wants to do in your life just to flee away. And I made up my mind I was going to have victory over that. Uh, and I've learned from my mother how mother's, mother knows how to heap coals of fire on people by doing nice things. Amen. And sometimes when you're feeling awkward, you just need to do nice things. Amen. Just reach out and bless. Bless and bless. Whereas you don't have time to bake a cake, bake a cake. Amen. Whereas normally you wouldn't be. You just reach out in every way possible because you're not going to let the enemy have that upper place. Hallelujah in your life. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Peter went with these men doubting nothing. Oh, hallelujah. And he says this. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember, verse 34, he's beginning to preach. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive, hallelujah, I perce uh, uh, perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Amen. If we can get that in our spirit, no social distinction, no economic distinction, no cultural distinction, no national distinction, no denominational distinction, no distinction. God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted 
with him. Hallelujah. And then he begins to preach. Hallelujah. And he's preaching about Jesus of Nazareth and how they're witnesses. Hallelujah. And notice verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God then Peter answered can any man forbid water uh, that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord then prayed they him to tarry certain days now chapter 11 is his experience and his explanation when he goes back up to jerusalem but the holy ghost is poured out remember cornelius's house is 10 years after the day of pentecost 10 years after pentecost the outpouring of the holy ghost in Cornelius's house for uh, and the beginning of the outpouring for the Gentiles uh, 20 years after Pentecost uh, we have the outpouring at Ephesus uh, in which they are baptized again uh, and, and the Holy Ghost and speak in other tongues uh, and it gives that continuity if you're speaking to denominational people they spake in tongues at, at Pentecost in the book of Acts. Ten years later at Cornelius' house, they spoke in tongues. Twenty years later at Ephesus, they're continuing to speak in tongues. And it'll help you in leading people into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, I believe this. Uh, I believe we're going to see a new charismatic renewal. Amen. Remember, we had it in the 70s and some in the 80s, but it's died out uh, in general. And there's a whole new generation that don't know anything about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and how are they going to know you and I? Uh, you and I are going to be the ones that lay hands upon them. Uh, hallelujah. And are used of God. Uh, hallelujah. And we're going to move out of our comfort zones. Uh, we don't have to tell them. Uh, they've got to be part of our denomination, our church, our group. Oh, no. We can go and give the message and watch the Holy Ghost come upon them and pray for them and see them come into that life of the Spirit of God. One of the things that God's done for a number of our people here is that he's opened up great denominational doors. And I remember a couple of summers ago, I saw that great uh, vision of Sister uh, Carneal ministering in that Presbyterian church up in Seattle. And Sister Carneal, every time you're not feeling a little well, you remember that word hasn't been <laughs> fulfilled. And we're going to see the fulfillment uh, of that vision. Amen. Sometimes the reason we have an outstanding vision that hasn't been fulfilled is so when the enemy tries to corner us by ill health or by a test of one kind or another, you just know you're going to come out of it all right because you still are going to see some of these glorious things that God is going to do by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Let me say this. Don't let any bias or prejudice hinder that great flow of the Spirit of God in your life. Let me say that now with this being an election year, don't let any partisan spirit hinder you from being able to bless all men. Amen. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican or an Independent or what you are. Amen. We've got to be able to bless all men and bless people on both sides of the aisle and bless in the name of the Lord. This is God's day and God ex is expecting a bigness of heart to come into our lives. 
Now let me say this. I remember one day when I heard a minister speak who had previously been a Pentecostal and one of the old-fashioned kind like I am, he, uh, you know, he had got moved in new circles and when he would be preaching, he would make little jibes against the Pentecostals. I went to him afterwards uh, and I said to him, even though you're flowing in a bigger stream than what you were before, God still wants you to be able to bless the Pentecostal people as well as anybody else in the congregation. And I said, you mustn't make statements like that and close the door to the Pentecostals. We've got to keep that openness, amen, to bless all men everywhere out of this great outpouring that came to the, Gen to the Gentiles. There the message was, Call not a common or unclean that which God hath cleansed. Amen. Hallelujah. And God is no respecter of people. Hallelujah. I don't know. Some of you have heard Mother say that she knew that when she knew that God would use me among the nations of the world, but when. God spoke to me to go to China. She suddenly had this little fear when God spoke to me to go to Hong Kong. She said, of all of the peoples in the world, the only pers uh, people she had a little uh, apprehension about were about the Chinese because she said when she was a child they had these comics, uh, you know, that uh, sometimes painted the Chinese in a little uh, mysterious light and uh, she had a little sense of fear concerning it. And she and Dad prayed that God would show them whether China was the first place that I was to go and in the night... She, heard, she and Daddy both heard me speaking in other tongues in Chinese, <laughs> fluent Chinese, and God answered that question concerning whether or not China was the place. But she had a, why is it that we all, that God always starts with the only area that we have any problem? <laughs> And the reason is he wants us to get rid of all the problem areas. Uh, he wants us to have open hearts, open spirits. Uh, he wants us to be able to bless those of low position as well as high. Uh, as the revival comes in, the river brings in so many fish. And Isaiah uh, 40, uh, Ezekiel 47 uh, lets us know there will be all manner of fish there's not going to be just one kind of fish and you and I are going to need a generosity of heart and a generosity of spirit a greatness birthed within us so that we can bless and I tell you what I find is this is that when I'm not equal to the task it just takes a moment <laughs> And when I see some situation that I've, I, I'd rather not, I just reach up and say, Jesus, help me. <laughs> and just as quickly as I say, Jesus, help me, there's a honey bucket full of love that comes down and begins to pour into my spirit. And when I meet that person, I'm not just saying a, a social uh, good to see you, uh, but I, I'm able to say in sincerity of heart, God bless you. Uh, hallelujah. That blessing is there because God has birthed it uh, in my spirit to bring it, uh, make it uh, be there. And God is enlarging us. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you may need a further enlargement concerning members of your family. Uh, concerning your in-laws, concerning bosses, uh, concerning people that you work with, whatever it is. Uh, God is no respecter of persons, uh, and he wants us to be a blessing uh, to all men everywhere. Uh, and this revival is going to bring us into the new. He's changing us, uh, areas that we're not comfortable in. Uh, he'll make us uh, 
more and more comfortable in them if he's calling us into it. Uh, Sister Sunberg said uh, when she started prophesying in that Australian trip, uh, you know, she, eh, she wasn't quite comfortable uh, in the doing of it, but you're getting more and more comfortable, aren't you? Uh, hallelujah. Whether it's a gift of the Spirit, God's bringing us into greater comfort uh, in that area of flowing uh, by the Spirit of God. And Lord, we know we're going to see another revival among the nations, among the Gentiles. It's going to be even greater than what began at Cornelius' house that night. We're going to see God pouring out His Spirit in Hollywood. We're going to see God pouring out His Spirit in Washington, D.C., in government circles. We're going to see God moving across our nation in legislative bodies. We're going to see, Lord, people that are working in these areas being used of God. Hallelujah. In ways that they've never considered being used of God. And we say, Lord, anoint us for this new day. Anoint us for this new day. Let us be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and let us go whether it's next door or, or to the next county or to the ends of the earth, let us go in obedience unto you. Oh, Tarabashiandai, equip us. Those areas we do not feel equipped in, equip us in those areas we pray. Oh, Tarabashiandai, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, There's a little chorus. I don't know if I can remember all the words, and some of you may know it. <clears throat> Change my heart, O oh Lord. Let it be like you. Change my heart, O oh Lord. Let it be. Change my heart, oh Lord, make it ever new. Change my heart, oh Lord, may it be like you. Let's just move forward for a few minutes before lunch. Change my heart, oh Lord, make it ever new. Change my heart.
change my heart. not sure about the tune. How does the tune go? Come and help me. You, how's the tune go? what I, you remember the second part, the tune, come. No, no, that's a different one. No, no, this, this is the second part of the one we were just doing. Uh, change my heart.
And know this, that I shall enlarge thee. I shall enlarge thee greatly, saith the Lord. Thou shalt be amazed at the enlargement that I shall place within thee. For I shall change attitudes. And I shall cause thee to love in difficult situations. I shall cause thee to pour out grace in areas that need grace. And I shall do it with such ease within thee. Thou shalt look at thyself in the mirror and know that thou art different. For I shall truly change thee from glory to glory. And I shall elevate thee, saith the Lord. I shall elevate thee in the sight of men for my name's sake. And thou shalt not be fearful nor afraid, nor shalt thou be afraid of the face of men. For I shall give thee confidence. Thou shalt have a strength that shall be in the depth of thy being. Thy very standing, yea, shall be with authority, saith the Lord. And men shall see that I am with thee, that my glory resteth upon thee. And when thou dost have an invitation to a place that thou hast not had one before, yea, know that it is I who am opening doors for thee. Yea, I shall give thee the words to speak, and thou shalt be effective for me, saith the Lord, for I shall do it. I shall do it. It is my hour. I shall take thee in, my, in the palm of my hand, and I shall lift thee higher and higher and higher, as long as thou shalt remain humble before me. I shall lift thee, saith the Lord. As long as thou art good to all men everywhere, I shall lift thee, saith the Lord. As long as thou art not a respecter of persons, I shall lift thee, saith the Lord. I shall lift thee that thou mayest show forth my nature. And yea, that thou mayest bring blessing wherever thou shalt be and wherever thou shalt go. Saith the Lord, remember I have thee in the palm of my hand, and my hand is wide open. It is not a closed hand, but it is a wide open hand. And as I have thee in the palm of my hand, yea, thou too shalt know an openness of thy hand, saith the Lord that thou shalt be able to bless all men everywhere, saith the Lord. O Karabiando, he be a randa rababandaro. Halabarisi alamando. You're working in us, Lord. You're working in us, Lord. You're working in us, Lord. You're working. Brother Joe, 
Brother Joe, don't run away. Love of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my King. And I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you in the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my King. And I love you in the love of the Lord. And I bless you in the name of the Lord. Bless you in the name of the Lord. 